All right, I'm making some apple fritter monkey bread. Super sweet, also kind of sour because we have the Granny Smith apples. The first thing we need to do is peel them, core them, dice them up into small pieces. I'm gonna melt about six tablespoons of butter for this recipe. So I've got this bowl here for that. Did not say that this was healthy, just said it was gonna be tasty. My apples are diced, butter is melted. We've got some cinnamon sugar here in this little bowl. And all you have to do is mix together about a fourth cup of sugar with a teaspoon of cinnamon. It all just depends on how much cinnamon flavor you want. So I have those two apples nice and diced up. I already had a few of these left over from the previous recipe, so I'm gonna use them in this one and then open up another can. But you want to cut your biscuits into quarters, then roll. I've got a loaf pan. That's what it's called, right? Loaf pan. My oven is preheated to 375. Take your biscuits, the little rolled biscuits, coat them in a little bit of butter, toss them in that sugar, the cinnamon sugar mixture, and then you're just gonna place them into your loaf pan. You do want a single layer at the bottom and you want them to be touching. So we're gonna use about half of our biscuits there at the bottom and then the rest will be for the top. I've got that single layer made in here. I also made up a little bit more of the cinnamon sugar and I'm gonna add brown sugar to that too. So let's add about a tablespoon and a half or so and mix that together. So now just start to take those apples and coat them in the brown sugar and cinnamon sugar. Okay, then place that on top of your layer that you have there. Okay, so about half of the apples in this layer. Then we kind of just repeat that process. Okay, you want your layer of apples here to be a kind of a thin layer, so I'm spreading it out to the edges because you want the next layer of your uh, biscuits to touch that, that bottom layer. So don't make it such a thick amount that they don't touch. Now I'm just gonna repeat the exact same process, put another layer of biscuits, and then we'll do another layer of apples on the top. This is gonna bake on 375 for about 35 to 45 minutes. We'll see the biscuits nice and bubbled up, and then you'll see um, the brown sugar and the cinnamon sugar and everything is creating somewhat of a sauce, and that's gonna be bubbly all along the edges. So good. Probably should have put a pan underneath it, but I'm really glad that we keep these things in our oven. Okay, you can see this is out of the oven. It did go over a little. I'm gonna have to clean that up, no big deal. My windows are open because since it did go over, it's kind of smoky in here. All right, so we're gonna take a half cup of powdered sugar that is now blowing everywhere because of the wind coming through and mix in three tablespoons of milk. Fortunately, it's actually really nice out today. This is our glaze. Now we're going to attempt to turn this over. Oh, I, oh, I forgot to run something along the edges. So unfortunately, I did not wait long enough to take it out of the pan. And so it stuck to the pan and then it all came apart. But I still think the flavor is gonna be there. So it's, we're still serving it. Still good for sure. Still get the apple, the cinnamon, the brown sugar. The flavor is definitely still there. So yours might look a little prettier if you let it cool longer. So obviously you can make traditional monkey bread in a bun pan or you can go this way and uh, have it all stick to your pan. Either way it works. Today's video is kindly sponsored by Foreo by Sweden. This is the UFO3. It is a deep 
facial hydration device. It actually increases your skin's moisture by 126%, which helps to reduce the look of fine lines and wrinkles. This is the newest product in the UFO series, and I have been loving it. In fact, my daughter has tried to take it from me several times. She also loves it. First of all, when you turn the product on, you immediately are going to hear a key sonic massage, which helps to relax the facial muscles. You've also got several different light functions. So for instance, I have used the orange light when I've gotten too much sun exposure outside during the day. You can use the white light and the red light if you want increased cellular production. There's an app for your phone that can tell you what each one of those is for. It's got warming, thermotherapy, and cryo cooling therapy. So sometimes you just want that cool for the depuffing, and then sometimes you wanna put a mask in this and you want that nice warming effect. This UFO3 by Foreo is so easy to use. All you have to do is take off the outer ring and place in your favorite mask. You can pre-select from the app which sheet mask you're using that will automatically select your light color and your warming or cooling option. You can also create your own customized routine. Sometimes I'm just using my regular moisturizer and I'm going in with this and creating my own routine as well. If you would like to get your own UFO3 by Foreo Sweden, you can use the link in my description box where you're going to get 30% off of this device. And not only that, for the first 50 people, you're going to get an extra 10% off. So make sure if you want this, you jump on that quickly. Use the code BIRDS10 for that additional 10% off. We are making chicken and dumplings. This one is such an easy dinner. If you want to throw together a meal in about 30 minutes or so, this is the one to do. It's perfect for a cold night. It's made with canned biscuit dough. You can make your own homemade dumplings if you want, but man, the canned biscuits are so easy. And it can also be made with rotisserie chicken. I personally have chicken breasts that I am just cooking over on the stove top and we're gonna shred them up and add them. Chicken and dumplings is such a great way to use up that rotisserie chicken. Let's head over to the stove top where pretty much everything in this meal is gonna be made. Like I said, I'm cooking up some chicken breasts over here, but while that's cooking, cooking, we're gonna go ahead and get started with the stuff that goes into our pot. Starting with a couple of tablespoons of butter here in my uh, big pot. So basically what we're doing is making our own homemade cream of. You can just use a can of cream of chicken if that's what you want. I never use those. I almost always just make them because they really are so easy to make. All right, while this is in there, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding in spices as it's melting. I've got Italian seasoning here maybe a half teaspoon or so. You don't you can add whatever spices you like into this. We like to add spice, we like a lot of flavor. Let's add in some basil again, probably around a half teaspoon. Let's add some oregano, same thing, about a half teaspoon. I like to add onion powder. You can obviously add onion if you want. You can go up to a teaspoon with this one, this one especially if you are not adding onion. And then we're gonna add in some garlic powder. I probably will do maybe a half teaspoon of this one. And then I'm gonna toss in a little bit of salt. This is salted butter, but I do like to add a little bit of salt here too. About a half teaspoon. Keep in mind that this is a somewhat homemade chicken noodle soup. We, don't, we are not making the dumplings. You can, it's actually not very hard to do that. But if you've got one of those cans of biscuit dough rolling around, in the drawer of your refrigerator. This is a great way to use them. Okay, I'm gonna add about three tablespoons of flour. We'll see what that looks like. I might end up adding four, just depending. I'm gonna go ahead and whisk that together though. Okay, just let that cook for a minute or two, and then we're gonna start to whisk in our liquid. I'm gonna start by adding some bone broth or chicken broth, whichever you prefer. And I'm starting with that because it is straight out of the pantry, it's not cold, which I find blends a little bit better with this right here. But overall, we're gonna use four cups. Now, unfortunately, the only one that my grocery store had was unsalted, so we're probably gonna have to add a little bit more salt to this. Okay, so let's just start with about a cup of this and then we'll add in more. I wanna get the flour combined, the roux kind of mixed in. Looking good, let's add more and continue to mix it together. Okay, now I feel like it's nice and combined. 
I don't have any, you know, flour chunks or anything like that. I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of this. Ideally, I would probably want another cup of the bone broth, but. So unfortunately, my grocery store has been out of bone broth. Unfortunately, my grocery store has been out of bone broth for a while. Um, this is the only one that we could get today. And Sam's Club, which is where I usually buy it in bulk, it's completely out and I'm really hoping that they haven't stopped selling it. I will be so disappointed. I do make it myself and I have a rotisserie chicken so I am gonna be making some later, but man, I just really, really, it's so convenient to buy it from Sam's Club because it's so inexpensive. To this, let's add about a cup of milk. Okay, let me give that a good stir here. Now, if I had some bouillon, I could make up some chicken broth. I don't think I have any though. Okay, once you start to see a bit of a boil here, that's kind of what we're looking for to add in the biscuits. The biscuits will just take a couple of minutes once we put them in there. All right, what I do is just take a biscuit and cut it into pieces. And then you can, I mean, you can obviously actually cut them if you want to, but I just use my scissors because that makes it really easy. You can cut them into fours, you can cut them into whatever sizes you like. There's some big duck points too. You want larger ones? Mm -hmm. I mean, some of them are pretty big. Lightly press them down, making sure that they're getting cooked. Add in some parsley for color. You can garnish with parsley too on, in the individual bowls or whatever you're gonna serve it in. Okay, we got the boil. These are all in there. I'm stirring it occasionally, but we just need it to really simmer now. So I'm turning down my heat about 10 minutes and then it's ready to go. I think I'm actually just gonna put a lid on just for a few minutes. Okay, it is done. So easy. It's about, about 30 minutes. Really hot, great flavor. Tastes like you threw together a homemade meal, which I mean, it's homemade. We made it in the home. It's partially homemade, but very, very good. So easy. This is also one that if you make enough of it, I always feel like chicken and dumplings reheats well. It's never one of those that I'm like, when it's reheated, it just gets like mushy and gross and it's not as good the second day. I feel like it is as good the second day. Sometimes it's better the second day. Very, very good and bold flavors with all those extra added spices. This is one of the easiest recipes that you can make with canned biscuit dough. We're gonna take this and put them in the air fryer and make some little cinnamon sugar donuts. You know the donuts that you get when you go out to a Chinese restaurant? That's kind of what we're making. So you can make these sweet or you can make them savory. It's up to you. We're going with a sweet version today. I am gonna spray my basket though. I am using regular buttermilk biscuits. You don't want the flaky ones. I'm gonna cut mine into pieces and just lay them in a single layer here on the air fry basket. Or if your air fryer looks different than mine, just in the basket is fine. So I'm cutting mine into six pieces, but that's just because I want the donut pieces to be smaller. And I'm also kind of shaping the edges just a little bit so they're a little more round it's not a big deal. You don't have to do any of that. They can be triangular, they can have sharp edges, it doesn't matter. I meant to preheat the air fryer. Preheating the air fryer to 350, I think this is all that I can fit in there. I'm gonna take some oil and just lightly spray these. Once the air fryer is preheated, these will go in for eight minutes. We'll flip them at the four minute mark or just kind of take it, shake them around a little bit. And then at eight minutes, we can pull them and we'll add some cinnamon sugar. While those are cooking, we need to get some melted butter and some cinnamon sugar ready to go. You can just do sugar if you want, but that cinnamon sugar kind of adds a little bit of extra fun. I'm gonna start with just a couple of tablespoons and melt that. We might end up needing more. You can obviously just take these and dunk them in the butter and roll them around. For the sake of not using a ton of butter, 
I'm going to just brush them with a little bit of butter. Okay, and then take them, the ones that I've done, toss them. You can put them in a baggie if you want. That might even be a little bit easier, but rather than waste a baggie, I have this ready to go. And then that's it, they're done. You just throw them into whatever dish you're gonna be serving out of. Now I may have actually left these in a tad longer than what I would prefer. So my air fryer seems to run hot. The recipe said 350 for eight minutes, flipping at the four minute mark. It, that probably does make sense for most air fryers, but we have found that ours does run hot, especially lately. So you might want to watch yours, maybe cut down on that time just a little bit. All right, y'all, these little cinnamon sugar donuts, so easy to make, really delicious. I mean, you can eat, you could eat about 10 of these. I think you could just do sugar or you could do cinnamon sugar like I did. Even being done maybe about one minute too long, they're still really good. Our verse today comes from 1 Peter 3, eight through nine. Finally, all of you be like-minded, sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay, repay evil with blessing because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you're new here, I would love if you would subscribe and stick around. Just hit the red subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can know each time I post a new video. Check out the video that I have listed above. This is the one that you should definitely watch next. I hope you're having a great week.